Drug store giant Walgreens reported its June sales figures today. Same store sales rising 2%. The stock is up slightly on the news, but many top analysts still have the stock as neutral or sell. Joining us now is Credit Suisse Equity Research Director Ed Kelly. Now, according to data compiled by Bloomberg, Ed's recommendations produce the best total return on Walgreens, and he's also our top rank analyst on its competitor, Rite Aid. Ed, welcome. Great to see you. So you reduced Walgreens to neutral just a couple of months ago, and then the company this morning coming in with strong sales. Are you holding on to that reduction in your outlook? Yeah, absolutely. The sales were a little bit better today. There's no question about that. But if you look at the underlying trend, uh, the trend is still fairly lackluster, uh, especially if you strip out uh, a gain from uh, the Memorial Day shift, um, you know, as, as well as the fact that the company just has some easier comparisons this month. They're adding some product to their stores like beer and wine. When you strip that product out, um, it's really still sort of a fairly lackluster trend. I think if you look at the company in total, they're still struggling with their own initiatives. Uh, it's a turnaround story. The remerchandising effort has not gone very well. They haven't made great progress on its cost-cutting program, which has been a big promise of theirs. And execution risk is still fairly high. Now, what about the pharmacy sales? Because this generated a significant portion of sales, right? It was something like 66% of Walgreens total sales. And comp sales for the pharmacy industry increased by practically double of the broader industry. So doesn't Walgreens have an advantage there? Well, the industry in general uh, in the pharmacy side has been fairly weak. Generally, I think what you're seeing is that in a recession, people do split pills, uh, skip doses, uh, doctor's visits are still not great. And I think the company is, is, is actually losing some share to some of its competitors like CVS, which have rolled out some new initiatives. So from a pharmacy perspective, I've actually been fairly uh, disappointed with the results we've seen there. Interesting. And then what are your thoughts on the Dwayne Reed combo? Are you in favor of that? Is that working out or is it too soon to tell? Well, I wasn't a big fan of the Dwayne Reed deal. I mean, I think they paid too much for that deal, and I think the timing of it just wasn't right. The company's juggling a lot of their own internal initiatives right now. They're remerchandising a ton of stores. Uh, they're cutting costs. Uh, they're restructuring a health care division of theirs. And now you're layering on Dwayne Reed, which to me is just another layer of execution risk that they can't afford right now. So what are the drugstores that we're talking about here, Walgreens, Whited, another one you mentioned, need to do to match up and be in good competition with you know, the large discount retailers, Walmart, Costco, et cetera. Well, the problem today is that the structures are, are just, the drugstores are structurally disadvantaged in this environment because they have a pay up for convenience model. Um, and consumers today want value. So I think, you know, some of what you need is just a better economy. You need the consumer to strengthen a bit. Um, some of it may be that you need uh, companies to actually focus on the box itself. So Walgreens' remerchandising in initiative is a step in the right direction. Yet they're expanding. I know they're building a new Walgreens on my street corner. So what's up with that strategy is that the right move or yeah. I mean people are shopping there obviously it's actually not you know the industry is saturated and Walgreens is, is showing that because they're slowing their square footage growth and their other competitors are doing the same it, it's really I think about focusing on a productivity in the box which their heads are in the right places because they're, they're they are focusing on it but the execution has been great is the corner drugstore about to become a thing of the past no, the way you're describing the industry and its challenges? I don't think that's ever going to be the case. I think the convenience model of the drugstore will, you know, will always resonate with the consumer when you're talking about the pharmacy business. But in this environment, I think they struggle a little bit more. Okay, so as for the grocery stores, let's talk about Safeway and Super Value, which you covered, facing similar challenges to the drugstores? Yeah, they are. It's a tough industry. I mean, you're seeing volumes generally weak because there's been trade down to value players like dollar stores, um, Costco, Target. So, you know, from that aspect, it, there's there's challenges. There's also the fact that the impulse purchase in the store doesn't happen. You layer on deflation and what you've basically got are negative comparable store sales. Companies get nervous. They start cutting price. So it gets very price competitive. So it's, it's a tough industry. I think you look at Safeway, Super Value coming up uh, to, to report earnings in the next few weeks. There's earnings risk on both sides. There's no question in my mind. All right. From a stock buyer's perspective, of all the names we've thrown out here today, which one would you prefer to own? It's really Kroger. You know, Kroger, Kroger. supermarket, tough industry, uh, but the company's executing very well. I think they've got some very easy comparisons coming up. Uh, they've got a cost cutting opportunity that's uh, that's underappreciated. They're starting to buy back stock, and the multiple sitting at trough, at trough levels right now. So I, I think that stock lines up very well. Ed Kelly is the director of equity research at Credit Suisse. Thanks for your time. Thank you.